right, well, for the first part of this uh, lecture, I want to do what we've kind of done in the past where we use <clears throat> a bit of a visual representation to explain some concepts that I think are going to be very important moving forward. Uh, so if you're ready to rock and roll, I highly encourage you to take some notes. Uh, I highly encourage you to draw the same diagram I'm, I'm about to make on the board. And then after that, <clears throat> we'll have a second video that kind of uh, takes us through a slideshow presentation, some PowerPoint stuff and hopefully it will help us answer these questions that we have presented to us in this very first part. So, first things first, let's get started. Uh, my ultimate question here today that we're gonna be working off of, and you'll see it here in a minute, why did the framers of the Constitution, why did the people who wrote the document, why did they want the legislative branch to be a bicameral legislative branch? So that's where we're gonna start today. And in fact, as we start talking legislative branch, Article One of the Constitution, it's very important uh, that we get this very first concept, the bicameral aspect of the legislature. So on your paper at home, what I would like for you to do, I would probably turn it more of a landscape as opposed to portrait, and this is what we're going to do. Are you ready? <clears throat> first things first, we are going to write on our paper bicameral. After we get done writing that word bicameral, we're going to consider what is the what does the prefix bi mean? We know that it means two, bicycle, biplane, bicameral. Um, the other word, camel, a fancy word for house. So two houses, a bicameral legislative branch. <clears throat> First thing I'd like for you to do on your paper, draw me two houses. I'm not grading you on your artistic ability, by the way, just on the uh, the concepts. Draw my two houses on the board or on the uh, on your paper. You're going to connect these two houses. As you can see, or at least I hope you're starting to see, we're we're just creating a little <clears throat> little government building here, a little Congress building. Um, on one side, uh, so we've got a two house representation. On one side. We're going to have something that's called the Senate. So make sure we write that down. Um, in the Senate, they're going to use a system called equal representation. And as the name would imply, equal representation, what we are saying here is that on the Senate side, everyone, every state is going to have the exact same number of representatives. So think about it. How many states does the United States have? If you looked at a flag lately, you know the answer to that is 50. There's 50 states. 50 times 2, 100. So we know there's 100 members in the Senate. Because, again, it's based on equal representation. Everyone gets two. So if you draw your uh, draw you a little... Oh, a little Kansas action over here. If every state receives the same number because it's equal representation, and we know all of them get two, we know that Kansas gets two senators. So, one side, two houses, the Senate, 100 members, equal representation. Let's get that all written down. Kansas, two senators. Hawaii, two senators. Maine, two senators. Every state gets two senators. It's based on equal representation. On the other side, we call this the House of Representatives. <clears throat> it's going to be based upon something that's a little bit different than equal representation. We're going to call it proportional representation. Maybe somewhere next to that word, uh, proportional, you could put in parentheses, <clears throat> population-based. And note, population and proportion both start with a piece. So that'll kind of help us understand. The number of representatives that live in the House of Representatives is based upon the number of people that live in your state. Whereas 
two senators per state. Each state may have a different number of representatives. And again, it's based upon proportion of the population. For every one senate or for every one representative, there's a certain number of people that are being represented. In this case, <clears throat> there are 435 members in the House of Representatives. And the last little bit I want us to get here, in the state of Kansas, we get four representatives. Now, obviously we add that up, we're going to end up with the number six. Here's where it maybe get a little confusing for some people. You'll hear these words interchanged quite a bit, Senate and House. Uh, some of the ideas will be interchangeable. For instance, a senator may be referred to as a representative, but a representative would never be referred to as a senator. So we just want to make sure that we're clear here. There's a total of six representatives for the state of Kansas. Two senators because it's equal proportion in the or it's an equal system in the in the Senate. Four representatives, four House members because there's uh, this is based upon population and, and the state of Kansas obviously doesn't have a huge population, so we only have four reps for a total of six representatives com uh, entirely. One last thing I'd like for you to add to this real quick. We're going to put a, a really simple equation up on the board. We're going to in this. The equation that I'm going to write is going to make more sense in our next unit, but I want us to be aware of it now. Um, we're going to take 100 senators. We have 100 people in the Senate. And then we're going to add 435 to that. Then you're going to add 3 to that. The reason we're adding 3 here, this represents the Senate, this represents the House, and this represents Washington, D.C. Add that up, you're going to, you're going to come up with the number 538. You divide that by 2 and you get 269. You add 1 to the 269, you get 270. Here's the point I'm trying to make. The 538 represents the number of electoral college votes. That represents how many are needed to win? So as we just take a look at this and we, we just kind of refresh our memories on what we're talking about here, we've got the Senate on one side, 100 members, equal representation, the House on the other side, 435 members, it's based on population of the state. They take that number of representation and that's how they create the Electoral College, or how many votes are going to be available to win the presidency. Um, again, that equation is going to make more sense when we get to the Electoral College, when we get to the executive branch. But let's start thinking about it now. This is part one of the video. We've got a little diagram that, we're, that we've drawn. Part two is going to have some stuff from the PowerPoint. So go ahead and click on that next.